Hello everyone. Um, today I am going to uh, resin over an 80 centimetre painting that I started the other day. I actually did video it, but uh, I had a problem with the resin. It, it was too cold and um, it started to uh, cure before um, I had a chance to work on it properly. So uh, to, you know, to manipulate the, um, the colours. So um, it cured and I couldn't do anything more with it. And I don't like the result. I don't even like the colours very much. So um, I'm going to do it again um, with um, using different colours. So the colours, oh, first of all, the version that I'm going to be using is Dalchem. Crystal Clear, Part B and Part A. Uh, part A is the resin, Part B is the hardener, and I need both. And I st have to stir them for um, for two minutes uh, once I mix the two together. And then I've got about, with this particular resin, there's about 30, 30 to 40 minutes at the most to work on it. So you've got to work fast that's, and that's the trouble I got into the other day. I'm hoping that I won't have that trouble today but if I do I'll go over it again. Uh, the colours I'm going to be using today are Stormy Night, it's an Art Tree Creations uh, paste, lovely colour, very dark. I'm going to be using Ultramarine Violet which is a language powder pigment and I put the, them in, I mix it in these little jars that I get from Artie Sue um, with a little bit, I use the powder and a little bit of part A, not part B because that will make it cure and go hard but you don't want that. Uh, so just a little bit of part A, mix it up and you've got a paste. I'm, use, I'm going to use both of these Art Tree Creations colours. This one's Tropical Bird and this one's Aqua. Both lovely colours. Today I'm going to use a bit of white. Uh, I'm, my favourite white is Solid Solutions Dynamic Pigment Paste White. Solid Solutions is a company in Melbourne. Uh, this one is, I think it's, um, I'm not sure whether it's Barnes or Archery Creations, but it's called, it's a metal pigment powder called Rich Gold. And the reason I have this over it is because when I bought it, uh, I promptly dropped it on the floor and it broke the lid. So I put this on. Um, and I should tell you as a safety precaution, um, with metallic colours in particular, make sure you don't breathe them in. They're highly toxic. Um, I use these measuring cups to measure out my resin. I buy these in Art Tree Creations. They're only a few dollars each. I, when I finished um, my painting, I clean them out so I can reuse them. First, with vinegar and a paper towel. Vinegar is a wonderful um, cleaning uh, thing. And I use isopropyl alcohol uh, uh, last because that gets rid of any residue stickiness. And um, I wear two pair of gloves so that when one pair gets dirty, I, sh I can just pull one pair off and it's not a problem. Um, to protect, um, you need to, with resin, you have to be very careful not to get it on your skin because um, you can develop an allergy to resin and if you develop this allergy, you'll never be able to use it again because any time you go near it, you'll get a rash. And I, this product is called Instead of Glove uh, or Skin Shield and I buy that um, at Bar with Barnes. 
um, that's a, they're every, bars are in every capital city. Um, I use leftover resin. I make um, I make coasters. or petri dishes or um, and that's a different shape petri dish they're not um, food safe no resin is so don't put food directly on it you can put uh, food on uh, if you make a table out of your um, resin pieces you can you can put um, you can put crockery and, and things on top of it, but not food, because it's not it's not food safe. I'm also I've got these little moulds recently uh, to to use. I spray them inside, and all my moulds I spray it with this stoner, uh, which I buy at Barnes. It's a it's a urethane mould release and it helps to um, release the, the resin from the moulds. And those little moulds make these beautiful little things. Don't know how I'm going to use them yet, but you never know. I'll, I, might make, I might put some in my pyramids. But anyway, um, sa safety. Um, you can wipe, if you get resin on your skin, as I said, put the, um, the, the steady shield on your, on your um, arms and use two pair of gloves. But you can also wipe off, if it gets on anywhere else on your skin, you can wipe it off with baby wipes. They're really good. You can actually put vinegar with the, in the, uh, the packet of baby wipes as well. That's very good. Um, as well. So, I've told you my colours. Um, with, I'll try and show you the um, ball, uh, the, the, my failed painting. I'll just turn this down and see if I can show you. That's it. 80 centimetres and it didn't, oops, that's coming off. Oops, sorry. That's better. Um, yeah, so it's too heavy for me to lift to show you. But what I do with my boards is underneath them, I put either blue painter's tape or frog tape around the edges underneath. Uh, that, that makes the resin that comes underneath the painting easy to get off. So um, uh, this is just the introduction. So I'll start doing um, the resin piece shortly. Oh, one other thing. Uh, you should wear face masks. No, um, yeah. You should wear, well, this is the best type, but you can also use This type, which you buy at Bunnings, both of them I bought at Bunnings, um, because you don't want to breathe, breathe the fumes is in. Um, I will use this one today because when I'm uh, videoing, you won't be able to understand me if I have one of those full ones on. So um, that's my introduction. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. I will talk. Um, during the um, demonstration but sometimes if I have the heat gun on you might not understand me so when the heat gun's going um, turn the sound down okay so I'll start shortly so wish me luck I hope I can turn this disastrous one into a good one <laughs> hello just testing to see if I can see my hands, and I can. Okay, so here I go. Uh, I need two of these with 600 mils each of the resin and uh, 
um, hard nut. So this is part A, which is the resin. So 300 on the, in this one. And 300 in this one. been a little bit harder to understand since I had my um, surgery and treatment for tongue cancer but I think you can understand me, I hope so anyway. Okay, 300 of this as well to make it 600. Being very careful that when it gets up to the 600 mark that I don't go over because I can't put it back in the bottle once the two are mixed, or once the two are put together. There, that's it. So that was part B, the hard nut. So now I'm going to mix them. Um, them for two minutes each. Look at my clock over on the wall to work out which is two minutes. If you don't um, mix long enough or properly well enough, if you don't mix well enough, you end up with sticky spots in, in your resin which will never cure. So I usually go around and round and then back and forward and back and forward and I scrape off here. And the reason I do that is to try is to make sure that I've got all of it mixed. And it's good to have straight um, the containers that you mix it with with straight sides. So this painting was a disaster. I did, I did um, <coughs> record it, but um, I won't be uploading it because it just didn't work. As I said, the resin, <coughs> excuse me, I think the resin was too cold. The room was too cold. Um, Temperature-wise, you should um, resin is best between 20 and 26. I think uh, the room was colder when I did this last one. It was, I think it was about 18, and possibly because the resin was sitting all night in a cold room, it wasn't warm. Not that you want it hot, but if you, if you have it too cold, it's harder to, um, to uh, flow. It doesn't flow so easily. So, each one individually a bit more stirring. Not too vigorously because you want you don't want too many bubbles. You do pop bubbles with a heat gun. But so that's that one. I'll give this one an extra stir. Oh, I didn't have my cups out. I normally prepare by having my cups and things out. So if you'll excuse me a second, I'll just go and get my cup for mixing. And here's the 
here I am and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I might put a little bit extra on the side with some silver in case I want to put silver. I'm not sure whether I will or not. I use it or not. But okay. Um, First of all, I'm going to put some resin in these little moulds. As I said, I don't know what I'm going to use the little things for, but I might find, I might put them in my pyramid, I'm not sure yet. those two I will give them a hit with the heat gun eventually but they can just sit there for now. So it doesn't matter if I get resin on this painting because um, I'm going to be putting resin on anyway. I did clean it thoroughly with isopropyl alcohol uh, before and I might give it another clean with isopropyl before I start. And the reason for that is to get any greasy spots because you, your fingers, finger marks on a resin piece leave greasy spots. So that's in case I decide to put a bit of silver. Uh, there's a bit left in the bottom, so what I'll do with the, what's left in the bottom is to um, put it around the painting so that it slides off easily. I'll just give it another spray, especially around the edges with isopropyl, as I said, to get rid of any greasy finger marks. And a paper towel. making sure I get the edges so I can put these back up here now So now I'm mixing the colours. This one is called Ultramarine Violet. It's a semi-opaque colour. And as I said before, it's a language colour. L-A-N-G-R-I-D-G-E. I have to spell it out because my lisp um, makes it difficult to understand me sometimes. So you can see I only had a little bit of colour on the top of the, uh, the, the stick, mixing stick. I think that's a bit pale so I'm going to make it a bit, put a bit more colour to make it a bit darker. So I'll use a different stick. So it's a very... <coughs> quite a transparent colour so because I'm I don't mind transparent sometimes but because I'm going over another painting see that, see what happens when you put a bit more colour it's a darker colour now still fairly transparent but that's fine doesn't matter if there's some of the underneath the painting shows through it gives it an extra dimension of depth. This one's the Stormy Night, uh, Three Creations, and it's a very dark colour. 
I just need that much on the end of the stick. I have to go shopping soon and buy some more of these sticks. I just buy them in the cheap shop. So there, that's that's the colour. Quite opaque. Lovely dark. Okay, um this one is a uh, tropical bird. Part three creations. I will actually have um a list of the names in the description so in case you didn't see my introduction where I held the colours up um, you can see where I got them from beautiful colour And this one, which is very similar, is a little bit less of it. Uh, aqua. Again, give it a stir. And what's on the end of my stick is enough colour. The colours are very hide it, you know, what they call, what it call, I forget, chemo brown I think, so that's the colour, different to that one, similar colours but um, similar in the same family but different colours, I'm going to use this gold that's for the silver if I use silver got so, um gold I'm not going to use a lot of gold a bit more this is a powder pigment so this is one you've got to make sure you don't breathe in. That's heaps. All resin uh, ingredients are a bit toxic, but the metallic colours are more toxic than, than the others. So that's the gold, lovely colour. I usually put that on last. So now I'll do white. I want a few areas of white. When your um, when these jars get stuck, I unstick them by banging them on the table. Sorry about the noise. Oops. Obviously didn't um, close that properly. So I stir it up. This is a solid solutions um, pigment paste. And I use that much. Put it on properly this time. Barn Silver Brilliant Powder. It's a metallic also and it's a lovely colour. So I th if I don't use it in the painting, I will use it in the moulds when I do the moulds later. I'll decide later if I want to use it or not. My 
favourite silver, that one. I use silver a lot, actually, probably more than gold. That's it. Just put it down there. Um, so now what I'll do with the um, the left, the resin I left over, I will put it um, on my painting so that the colour uh, slides over. It's also good if you want to leave, if you have it doing a second layer like I'm doing now, and you want uh, some of the underneath colour to show through, you can put a clear on top and, and leave that part uh, without colour. And the underneath colour will show through again. I've got quite a bit. With that, I'm left more than I thought. As I said, I reuse these containers, which I buy in Art Tree Creations couple of dollars each. I clean them with vinegar first, vinegar and a paper towel. And I clean them before, uh, well, after I finish the painting. Um, and then I use um, isopropyl alcohol to clean it properly. So. Now I'm just spreading the um, resin. If I've got some left over, I'll use that too. Let's take this painting. I do workshops in resin, making resin. I, I can have up to about four students in here in my studio. But I do it one on one as well. And uh, we usually, in my workshops, we do a 60 centimetre board. It's not quite as big as this one. The bigger they are, the harder they are. So this size would be a bit difficult for a big, uh, for the first time. So 60 centimetres is quite good for people learning. So uh, these gloves, these purple gloves, which I buy in Bunnings, I don't like them that much because they, oh, there's a bit of resin piece. Um, yeah, they're a bit, a bit flimsy. The black ones are better. I haven't got many of them left now since the coronavirus. It's been a bit hard to get some of my normal supplies. I'll just come around here. And, and do that. So I've got a good layer over the whole painting. And as I said, making sure I get the sides covered so that the resin will slide over easily. Now I'll get rid of the purple glove, which I hate. <laughs> and um, these ones are much, much better. Okay, so now I'll start putting my colours on. I'll start with the dark. Um, actually, I won't. I'm going to start. Normally I use my white last. But this time, I'm going to put some on first in large patches rather than small ones all over. And then I'll put the dark.
and I'll overlap it a little bit onto the white. Not much. And next I'll put I'll put the purple next. As I said, this is a I think this colour is fairly transparent, so it might be that some of the underneath painting will show through with this. But that's okay. It gives it extra depth. So you can see, can't you, that it's a very transparent colour. Okay, I'll do this one next. This was a tropical bird. Again, overlapping some of the colours. one's the aqua. I always give them another stir. I'm just putting the colours on randomly. I'm not, um, I didn't have a pattern a thought out beforehand. You can do that. You can have something worked out in your head, but being a fluid medium, it very rarely turns out how you expect anyway. I like the randomness of it. Next, I'm going to just tilt the board a little. This way, just, oh, it's heavy. <sighs> Too heavy. Huh. Okay, so now I'm going to use my heat gun to push it around a bit. So um, I probably won't talk a lot whilst this is on because it's very loud. So just turn the volume down if it's too loud. And it's stuck, so I had a bit of resonance, so I just bash it like that. Oh, it's not if I turn the power on. So first I heat the resin up a little bit and then I use this sort of motion and push colour into colour to make um, racing.
don't like that area very much. I think that purple was a mistake. Put a bit more on here. But I have to move fairly quickly because the resin is uh, starting to cure. Did you notice that I was um, not leaving the heat gun uh, on an area for too long? And that's because resin can burn if you, if you leave it in the same spot. So I just have to turn this back on again. very quickly with my uh, torch. I can't do much more to it because I can see that it's starting to cure. And this is just, I also use this for pushing to make more release sometimes, but I won't today because I can already tell that the bear has is starting to cure. So I'll just do it briefly. Yeah, it's not moved much, but I've already got quite a bit of lotion. I think it's quite pretty. There's, I don't, oops, I don't like um, that purple. I think in that area there, but not much I can do about it at this stage. Um, if I decide to, I'll put another colour on top. That's another. That's a little bit of hard resin on the side. I'll just go around the edges to make sure all the edges are covered. I think I will probably do another layer on this because I really don't like that purple. 
but you can see lots of lovely lacing areas in it. My biggest part I don't like is that and that. So I will do uh, a further video, a further painting. I'll see how this one turns out, whether or not I video it or not. But that's all for now. I will um, post the results. So thanks for watching.